an atlas at Manchester. Using thousands of circuit packages like this, the world's fastest and most powerful computer takes shape, built at the Manchester Computer Factory of Ferranti Limited and destined for the computing machine laboratory of Manchester University. Normally, one sees uh, an increase of perhaps tenfold in the power of each new generation of computers. The difference the Atlas brought was more like a hundredfold. Suddenly, that same program that ran for hours would run in minutes. All this activity was happening more or less without uh, human interaction. When we came to Atlas, Tom Kilburn was the key man. Uh, he had come to Manchester as an experienced engineer, if you like, from a government research establishment. My role has been quite simple, and that's been to look at the last computer, see what was wrong with it, uh, and build the next one. There is a progression of computers uh, that leads right up to Atlas, and most of them in this progression were designed as uh, university prototypes that were then taken and marketed in production form by uh, the company Ferranti Limited. The Ferranti Mark I was the first commercial machine to be produced. Their aim was to be first into the future, and if you're first into the future, you're taking a risk. Finished packages of many types, all using transistors instead of valves, are the building bricks from which much of Atlas is made up. The nuclear energy people were demanding more computing power for strategic purposes. It was just about the time that we decided to build what we called Muse, and so Tom Kilburn talked with both Sir Vincent Ferranti and Sebastian Ferranti, and they agreed to build a machine based on Muse, and they decided to call it Atlas. Here we had a small group of dedicated people coming up with some key inventions in the face of significant difficulties. Problems in the early days were that all the individual components had to be assembled by hand. On Atlas at London, it took us six months to get it recommissioned from the shop floor on Manchester. To put a machine like that all together, check it out and get it working, is a very considerable time. We didn't think of that working long shifts was anything that mattered at all. We, we just worked. I mean, the longest I ever worked was 26 hours. And then I nearly forgot to get off the train when I got home. The factory at West Gorton had been a railway engine manufacturing place. So it was absolutely filthy with really hard soot. This dirt got everywhere. You just couldn't see the components it was just a thick layer of greasy soot. So one third of our faults were due to dirt. We were constantly repairing the system and getting it working. I do remember uh, the time in December 1962 when the Atlas was officially switched on. I'd received an official invitation. It was all set up and organized by Ferranti. I was a humble research student but I sensed that some big occasion was about to happen. When we had finished commissioning it, we eventually got to a point where the machine would run for 10 minutes without fail. And at that point, we all cheered and went to the pub to celebrate surviving 10 minutes. The Atlas was worth approximately two and a half million quid, which you're talking about 50 million quid in today's money. The whole nation would not be expected to install more than two or three of these machines. So clearly time on the machines had to be shared. It was charged at about 750 pounds an hour to 800 pounds an hour. When Atlas came along, a lot of problems that were too difficult to be solved were able to be solved. Looking back over 50 years, we can see um, two or three absolutely fundamental and seminal ideas of computers that first saw the light of day in Atlas. First of all, virtual memory, which is a way of organizing storage that we see on every 
modern computer, and secondly, a multitasking operating system. Again, we see that on every modern computer. It still remained a memorable computer for a good 20 years after it had stopped being used. If you mentioned the word Atlas, people say, oh, Atlas. It was still counted as something to have worked on. I certainly feel very happy to have been, I think, uh, a component, as it were, in the design of Atlas. That was a time when we felt that we were doing something that was world class. I think it's very important that all major steps of any technology be remembered because that's when something made a sudden change and changed everybody's lives since. People thought that only one atlas would be needed, ever. And now your washing machine has a more powerful computer in it than Atlas had.